Hello everyone, welcome to the tutorial number 16 of IIT Jam Chemistry and this is lecture number 2 of the physical chemistry chapter gaseous state and the subtopic which is going to be discussed here is collision diameter and collision frequency. Let's begin with collision diameter. When two identical molecules approach one another then the distance of closest approach between the centers of molecules is known as the collision diameter which is denoted as sigma. Here is the picture where two molecules are approaching each other. They are identical and spherical in shape and this one is approaching from left to right and this one is approaching from right to left and this is the closest approach where this is the point of contact and in that case the distance, the minimum distance of the two centers is known as the collision diameter. Now move on to collision frequency and the number of collisions per unit volume per unit time is called the collision frequency. That is, you the gas molecules are kept at a particular volume which is unit volume. Now they are colliding with each other. So the number of collisions in one second is called simply collision frequency. This is the molecules which is moving from this direction to this direction from right to left. So its collision diameter should be from here to here in the downward direction or from here to here in the upward direction. Now if Ca is the average speed of that molecule then in one second it will travel from this point to this point. Simultaneously it will produce a cylinder of this type of cylinder which is actually met by the collision diameter. And in that case, collision diameter is considered as the radius of that cylinder. So, the cylinder is swept away by this molecule in one second. And the cross-sectional area of the cylinder, this area or simply the area of this circle is known as the collision cross-section and the value is pi r square here in place of r we are writing sigma. So, it is pi sigma square and the SI unit is meter square. Average velocity, we know about this, it is Ca meter per second. Now, the volume of the cylinder swept away by the molecule in one second. So, in one second, it is traveling from here to here. So, the volume swept away is actually pi r squared h. So, the value of r is sigma and the value of h is Ca. And the unit should be meter cube per second because we are just multiplying this with this one. So, meter squared into meter per second that means meter cube per second. Therefore, the volume of the cylinder swept away by the molecule in one second is pi sigma square Ca meter cube per second. Now, the centers of the molecule which will fall within this volume in one second. How could you calculate this? Simply just uh, multiply this volume with the number density. That will be the uh, number of molecules which would collide with this one. But one thing is um, here we have to mention that there is an assumption that only this molecule is moving and all other molecules are, are static that is they are at rest. In that case the collision frequency should be denoted as Z1 only. Look here it is assumed that this particular molecule is only moving and all other molecules are at rest. Now the second line is more important. The total number of other molecules that will have their centers within this cylinder in one second. So this is the cylinder which is produced in one second and the centers number of the molecules who, whose centers would fall within this volume in one second. What should be the value? Simply the product of these two number density into the volume of the cylinder and what should be the unit? meter cube would be cancelled by meter cube inverse so only second inverse and this is the result pi sigma square c a n prime and the unit must be second inverse that means the number of collisions per unit second and this is denoted as z1 why only why z1 only because this frequency is actually the number of collisions experienced by only one molecule and here this equation pi sigma square c a n prime equal to z1 is a temporary equation because this is only by considering the 180 degree collisions but there are lot of 
collisions which are other than 180 degrees. So in reality, all the molecules are moving with an average velocity c a and colliding with each other from all directions from 0 degree to 180 degree. So we have to take the mean angle of these two and this angle is 90 degree and in that case c a would be replaced by relative average velocity and this relative average velocity is c a root 2. So this expression of z1 the average velocity c a should be replaced by relative average velocity c a root 2 and this way this equation which equation now this equation z1 equals to pi sigma square c a n prime should be actually pi sigma square c a root 2 n prime so the corrected form of this equation let's write this this one now the question is how this relative average velocity is calculated this is very simple okay relative average velocity has been derived from the 90 degree collisions how from the 90 degree collision look at this picture suppose this molecule is coming this molecule is coming from this point to this uh, along with this direction with average speed ca this one also having speed ca but it is coming approaching from this point to this point that means from this direction and look the angle of this two directions it is exactly 90 degree and then after collision it will go back via this direction and it will collide back via this direction so for from this 90 degree collision we have to take the resultant vector of these two ca values and look if this is ca this is ca then this red colored line arrow is the resultant vector and definitely this is ca root 2 we all know about the about this geometrical calculation okay there are n prime number of molecules per for unit volume but the collision between two molecules cannot be counted twice and hence half n prime has to be multiplied with the expression of collision experienced by a single molecule thus the exact expression of overall number of collision per unit volume per second so what is the meaning of this paragraph actually we are considering only one molecule and the we are calculating the number of collisions experienced by it only but our motive here is to calculate the overall number of collisions per unit volume per unit time in that case suppose a molecule is colliding with b molecule so a molecule will have the equation will have the number of collisions per unit time that is pi sigma square c a root 2 uh, n prime the number of collisions experienced by b molecule that is also having the same value but here we are counting the same collision twice so we have to divide this by 2 so this is for in for the case of two molecules so in case of three molecules there are three collisions experienced by these three but the fact is that exact number of collision is 3 by 2 similarly for n prime number of molecules the that equation z1 must be multiplied by n prime by 2 that means half n prime so if we want to calculate the value z11 that is the overall number of collisions per unit time per unit volume by all the molecules then in that case we have to multiply this value of z1 with half n prime and this way we get the exact expression of z11 according to equation 11 and that is the product of these two 1 by root 2 pi sigma square ca n prime squared and the unit must be meter per meter cube per second that means per unit volume per unit time so this is the equation and here we are writing z11 because two similar type of molecules are colliding and this type of binary collisions per unit time per unit volume is being calculated here by following this equation so this is the final equation now here in equation number 11 there is no mention of temperature not pressure okay so we have to relate them if n number of gas n moles of gas occupies v volume then this v volume is occupied by n 
into any number of molecules because one mole contains Avogadro number of molecules. Then n mole would contain n into Avogadro number of molecules. Therefore, the number of gas molecules per unit volume that is its number density it is what? Now, simply this overall number divided by the total volume that is the number per unit volume. So, it is n small letter n Avogadro number divided by volume. But we know from the relationship PB equal to nRT, n by V must be equal to P by RT. So, in place of n by V, we have put here P by RT. Now, we are taking this Na below R here. So, we are getting the expression R by Na in the denominator. And in the numerator, P is as usual, T is as usual. It is present here. So, R by Na, we know this is the molecular gas constant and this is nothing but the Boltzmann constant. Okay. And here, n by v equals to p by rt we are mentioning it here and this is equation number 12. now let's recall equation number 9 what was equation number 9 in the equation number 9 we had the expression of average velocity ca and it is nothing but equal to root over 8 kt by pi m so we have to put this value two values one is n prime another is ca so with the help of equation 9 and 12 Equation 11 becomes this one 1 by root 2 pi sigma square. Now, in place of CA, we are putting this value, and in place of n prime, we are putting this value. And the final result is sigma squared root over 4 pi by mk cube into p squared by t to the power 3 by 2. So, all these terms are constants, and these two are variables. Therefore, for a particular gas, Z11 equals to some constant. This part is con totally a constant into P squared by 2 to the power 3 by 2. And this is equation number 13. And uh, what conclusion we can draw from here? When this one is constant, it is proportional to P squared, directly proportional. When this one is pressure is constant, then it is inversely proportional to the 3 by 2th power of temperature. So, we can conclude like this. Binary collision frequency is directly proportional to the second power of pressure when temperature is kept constant and inversely proportional to the 3 by 2th power of temperature when pressure is kept constant. Now, this is for constant temperature or constant pressure. What about at the condition when the volume is kept constant? From the gaseous equations, there is K Lussac's law. And according to the Gay Lussac's law, when volume is kept constant, the ratio of pressure and temperature is also a constant. That is, P by T equals to constant. So, if you put any power on P by T, then this is also a constant. That means, P to the power some power divided by T to the power some power is also a constant. And if this power is n, then n can be any number. So, from this relationship, we can conclude that P square by T square is a constant or P to the power 3 by 2 divided by t to the power 3 by 2 is also a constant. Now, putting constant into p square in place of t square or constant into t to the power 3 by 2 in place of p to the power 3 by 2 in equation number 13. Let us look back equation number 13. This is equation number 13. So, this one, we will just replace this by p to the power 3 by 2 into some constant. Okay, so it will give some constant into p to the power half or here you put t to the power t squared into some constant then it will give give yet another constant into t to the power half so this is the relationship z11 equals to another constant into p squared by p to the power 3 by 2 that means this is p to the power half that means z11 is proportional to p to the power half or when if you replace this part from equation 13 this part by p squared into some constant then it will give z11 equals to some another constant into t to the power half that means z11 is directly proportional to t to the power half so at constant volume constant frequency is directly proportional to the square root of temperature or pressure when the volume is kept constant now, binary collision between two different gases. Till now, we 
have been calculating Z11. What about Z12 when the molecules are not identical? So if there are two different types of gases say within a mixture then the number of binary collisions per unit time per unit volume is Z12 and the expression is nothing but here N1 prime N2 prime. So N1 prime is the number density of the first gas component and N2 prime is the number density of the second gas component and sigma 1 2 is actually the um, collision diameter arising out from the two different molecules that is this is the distance between the center of the two different molecules and mu is reduced mass if m1 and m2 are masses of the two gaseous molecules then 1 by mu equals to 1 by m1 plus 1 by m2 this way we get equation number 14 so here let's elaborate n1 prime n2 prime number densities of the two gaseous molecules 1 by mu is 1 by m1 plus 1 by m2 that is mu is reduced mass here and sigma 1 2 is the average collision diameter okay of the two molecules and this is the average collision diameter the distance between the center of the two different molecules this is sigma 1 2 so this is about z 1 2 now if the molecule till now the molecules were, had been colliding with each other of same uh, size or dimension or different size or dimension this way we have got equation number 13 and 14 now apart from this the molecules are also colliding with the wall of the container so with the wall how many collisions are taking place per unit time as a function of temperature and molar mass or molecular mass the expression of average velocity in one dimension one dimensional velocity this is u this one has some expression this is root over rt by twice pi m or kt by twice pi small m and this is equation number 15 the number of collisions on unit area of the wall of the container per unit second it is z wall equals to number density into average velocity in one dimension simple the product of the this one with number density so if number density is n prime then it is n prime u and we know the expression of n prime it is p by kt and the expression of u here it is root over kt by twice pi m and finally we get the expression of z wall equals to root over p squared by twice pi kt small m and this is equation number 16 so that's all for this topic and let's discuss some questions here question number six continuation from the previous lecture in the previous lecture there had been five questions so this is question number six collision frequency of a gas at constant pressure is proportional to its temperature as out of these four options which one is correct we have just learned that z11 is proportional inversely proportional to the 3 by 12th power of temperature that is it is proportional to 3 to the power uh, t to the power minus 3 by 2 so option d is the correct answer here and question number seven collision frequency of a gas at constant temperature is proportional to pressure as so which one is correct this one also we have just learned at constant temperature it is directly proportional to this one so option b is the correct answer so that's all for today's lecture thank you and have a nice day